Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another fashion video this time. I feel like I'm creating this video to be almost like your little fashion, I don't want to say fashion bible, but go-to video. If you are someone that is struggling when it comes to dressing, if you are that person that stares into your wardrobe, into your drawers, you're staring at clothes, you have clothes, but it ends there. You're stuck on how to piece things together. Maybe you're just in a little bit of a style rut. I have loads of messages, especially new mums or even mums of like two or three children. But I get a lot of new mums that message me and say, you know, since having a baby, they've lost their style a little bit. And I get messages from everyone, all sorts of people just saying that they just struggle with this sort of thing. And a lot of these tips that I'm about to give you are, to me, these are my go-to not rules but my go-to tips that are so ingrained in my brain that I don't even think about them. It's not until I come to actually making videos or making fashion reels on Instagram where I actually have to write them down or condense them into tips or I actually really think about them. So I really hope you find this video useful guys and one of my favourite sayings when it comes to fashion is that money buys clothes, it doesn't buy style. It doesn't matter what your budgets are, you don't have to have a wardrobe full of designer items, you don't have to spend a million pounds to look a million pounds being stylish isn't exclusive and feeling good in your clothes shouldn't be exclusive so I just really wanted to preface this video by saying that that I think everyone can take something away from the tips that I am going to give well at least I hope so anyway so without further ado I'm gonna jump straight into this video and give you my 10 tips to elevate your everyday outfits Okay, tip number one, and this might seem really simple, but so many people fall at the first hurdle, and that is to establish the basics. You know the old saying, you can't build a house on poor foundations, and the same goes for your wardrobe. If you don't have those boring pieces, the everyday pieces, the essential building blocks in your wardrobe, you're kind of going wrong, you're getting off on the wrong foot, okay? I know it sounds boring and I know whenever I speak about, you know, capsule wardrobes, I get comments like, oh, where's the colour? These are boring. 100%, I know they're boring, but it's those boring, basic items that make up the foundations of your wardrobe. It's all well and good having lots of statement pieces, bold prints, bold colours. What are you going to pair them with? What are you going to reach for if you really don't know what to wear? How are you going to pair things together? You need the basics and it's so important. So I've already got videos on this on what I think personally should be in a capsule wardrobe but your everyday tops, your white t-shirts, black t-shirts, neutral long sleeve tops, your neutral jumpers, your classic jeans, classic trousers, your staple blazers, your coats, your everyday shoes, bags, accessories. It's so vital to dressing well, to actually focusing on the basics. I love a statement jacket or maybe a statement jumper or something like that. Having a wardrobe just full of statement pieces just isn't realistic for many people. So establish the basics. This leads me quite nicely onto point number two. Point number two is to stop following trends. Again, I'm going to preface this by saying I'm not saying never follow trends. It can be so fun to dabble amongst the trends, but if your wardrobe and your choice in clothes is solely determined over what's trending, you're not going to be wearing things that perhaps always flatter your skin tone, your body type, your height, if you just have a wardrobe full of trends. Not every trend suits every single person. And I think we all know this by now. There will be some trends that literally make your skin crawl. If you watch my fashion trends video, you'll know this, guys. I am very open and I tell you if a trend is a bit of me or if I'm going to leave it, leave it to the others. But yeah, don't get sucked into thinking that just because something is trending, you need it in your wardrobe. If it doesn't suit you or doesn't flatter you or you just don't feel comfortable or confident in it, it's not going to look good. So... I would always say stick to what you know, trends can be fun, they can pull you out of your comfort zone, it can be really fun to, as I said, dabble with the trends, but don't base your entire 
wardrobe around the trends and don't break the bank or you know you see these videos on TikTok or Instagram saying you know run to this shop and buy this or run here and buy that they're just not very well considered something that's trending is not going to suit every single person so be wise when it comes to buying don't get sucked into the hype of things and to the trend of things focus on your capsule pieces the pieces that you know you will wear every single day and if a trend comes along and you think actually that would suit me and that would fit into my wardrobe i would wear that go for it just don't follow them religiously it's really not worth it and a point i'll make with that as well is quality over quantity again with these videos saying run to this shop and buy this and run here and buy that and creating this urgency like you have to have this or you're you know <laughs> you're not going to be happy in your life i don't like these kind of videos i always hope my videos inspire and help you out of styling ruts i hope i never evoke a feeling of urgency like you absolutely must own everything that i talk about i hope you take what you want to take from my videos and then you're happy to leave the rest so yeah focus on quality not quantity it's no good having a wardrobe full of clothes that you do not wear i can safely say everything you see in this room I have worn. I've probably worn pretty much everything in sight within the last month or two. So yeah, don't get sucked into the hype of things. With that quality over quantity, it's much better to spend slightly more on an item that you're going to wear again and again and again, as opposed to buying lots and lots of things that are cheaply made, won't last, they'll look terrible after you've washed them once, and then it's a waste of money and it's gone down the drain. Okay, moving on to tip number three. I feel like this is such, such a big one and this gets overlooked or completely brushed over in so many of these styling videos. Tip number three, probably the most important one and that is confidence. Now, have you ever seen those people? Maybe you'll see them in pictures from Fashion Week and they're just wearing the probably what you would consider the most wildest outfits, I don't know, clashing colours and patterns and their outfits are really quite out there, different from anything you'd ever see from the norm, but they just seem to pull it off and they, they just look really cool and yeah, you kind of wonder how, how? I, and you have that, well, I could never wear that. How, how can they wear that? It's all in confidence. You have to be confident in yourself that you feel great and it, Honestly, it just shows on the outside. We've all been there. It's the same with things like public speaking. You know, if you're sort of shy and you don't make eye contact and you used to speak to the floor and it's totally different to standing there and delivering. And it's the same when it comes to wearing your outfits. If you're just shoving on any old outfit in your wardrobe, you don't feel great, you feel frumpy, you know it doesn't flatter you. You just kind of want to blend into the wall, don't you? You don't want anyone to really look at you or pay attention to you. You don't, you don't want to draw attention to it. You're just like, you know what, these are just clothes. I've shoved them on, I've given no thought, and that's it. So confidence is such a big one. You know, I will, I'm happy to get mocked every now and then on Instagram. I will get these, you know, middle-aged men that will comment on my fashion reels or fashion posts and say, oh, who cares? Great if you don't this video isn't for you but I know so many people who feel so much more confident when they feel that they look their best and they can put their best foot forward and those are the people that I'm speaking to with these videos and if you are so low in confidence and you really don't feel like you look your best or you know you haven't you know you know your outfit isn't as flattering as it could be it can really have a knock-on effect to your own mental well-being it, it can really affect a lot of other things so speaking of confidence a lot of things i find personally for me help me i am someone that i love my makeup if i don't have my i'm not saying i never leave the house without makeup either by the way i do feel confident without it but there's just something about putting on a nice outfit having some simple polished makeup it just makes me feel put together so i will never ever say that you have to wear makeup to look good it's whatever makes you feel good it's the same with doing my hair if i just roll straight out of bed and put on an outfit i don't feel my best and that's usually how i look when i go to the yard to go and ride my horse i look like a bit of scruff but 
I don't care. But if I'm going to London to a meeting, if I am speaking to maybe brands that I'm working with over a Zoom call, I like to look polished and part of that is what gives me my confidence to be able to do my job. And I think a lot of that confidence does come from looking after my skin. Now, I'm not going to sit here and talk to you about skincare products or anything like that. I feel like there's lots of videos that you can probably go back on and see my kind of recommendations. And also, when it comes to skincare products, it's not a one-size-fits-all. I feel like everyone has their favourites. But I would seriously look at, you know, investing in a good skincare routine. If you're confident in your skin and in yourself, you'll just feel so much more confident in your outfit. And with that, that does bring me on to the sponsor of this video, Sleep and Glow. I want to introduce you to my secret weapon when it comes to skincare, my Skin and Glow Omnia Pillow. And its unique 3D design helps fight and prevent sleep wrinkles and morning puffiness. So unlike normal pillows that really kind of squish and crush the side of your face, you know when you're asleep and your head is kind of in the pillow, it's actually creating all of these additional lines and wrinkles on your face. Now, we've all got the, you know, the regular lines and wrinkles from having emotions, laughing, crying, frowning, but when your face is literally crushed up against your pillow for eight hours every single night, can you imagine all of the extra little lines? I mean, have you ever got up in the morning and gone into a bathroom, looked at yourself and thought, geez, I look tired, I look puffy, where have these extra lines come from? And then as the day goes on, they kind of just disappear. As we get older and our skin loses that elasticity and the collagen, those lines don't shift anywhere. You're actually just creating more unnecessary lines on your face. So that is where the Sleep and Glow Omnia pillow comes in. So unlike your regular pillow, it has been designed to help you sleep in a certain way that stops this horrible crushing and squashing motion against your face. Now, whether you're a back sleeper or a side sleeper, for me personally, I'm a side sleeper. I know some people have literally trained themselves to sleep on their back and this supports that. So if you want to rest your head in the middle here, let me demonstrate and sleep on your back, it's very, very comfortable. It also, because it was also designed by orthopedists, it's fantastic if you suffer with your neck or back, luckily I don't, but it does assist in that as well. But if you're like me and you like to sleep on your side and you are used to the pillow crushing your face and squidging all up to your face and feeling all cozy and comfy, you're gonna wanna try this one. So unlike normal pillows, you can pop your head in really nicely and feel very supported, but can you see there is actually a little dip here, almost like a little cradle shape, and it just lets your face sit almost like it's floating in air. There is nothing pressing against my face. I still have complete support on my neck, my head, my shoulders, but I haven't got material squashing my face and I have noticed such a difference since using this pillow it just means that first thing in the morning I'm not looking in the mirror and going oh geez I've got a nice foundation to start my skincare routine my makeup routine and it just makes me feel as I mentioned more confident and I am not against aging gracefully I see aging as a privilege but I also think we can look and feel our best and this is a really great natural way to just prevent those extra lines and wrinkles. One thing I do know about this brand is they never do discounts but they are for Black Friday so I will pop some details on screen and in the description box for if you do want to give this pillow a go. I believe they do do a 30 day trial so if you do try it out and it's not for you it's no big deal but yeah I always say it's worth a go. There's no loss if you give it a go for a month, but decide it's not for you. But for me, I'll never go back now. Okay, tip number four, balance your proportions. It is not enough to just throw on your clothes and wear them. You need to finesse them. You need to balance out proportions. And that's the only way clothes are going to flatter your body, no matter what body type you have. That is the way it's going to work. So you might look at, let's just say, a white t-shirt and a pair of jeans. And for whatever reason, you might think, 
I can't wear that, that doesn't suit my body type. I can guarantee there definitely is a solution. You're probably just not balancing your proportions. So I've got an example here of what I mean. So here I am wearing a top with some trousers and it's all kind, it's okay, but it's all just kind of hanging there. It's not really, it, you know, it could look better. As you can see now, I've just done a really simple French tuck. What that does is it shows where my waistline is. It shows the length of my legs. It gives the actual outfit some structure. It gives the outfit some shape. You can see where my waist is, see how long my legs are, and all of a sudden the outfit feels more balanced. Okay, number five, let's talk about this. The three colour rule. I feel like when it comes to dressing, sometimes people just overcomplicate things. If you are wondering why your outfit just doesn't look right or maybe it just doesn't feel put together, then I would advise maybe trying the three colour rule, not wearing more than three colours at once. So I am going to show you a couple of examples here. It just makes the outfit feel finished, it makes everything feel cohesive. I'm not saying stick to three colours with every single outfit, you might choose to wear one colour, two colour, three colours. I'm saying that if you are feeling a bit stuck or if something looks off with your outfit, assess the colours and stick to the three colour rule. It will just help tie everything together and make everything feel balanced in terms of how it looks. It will just make the overall picture better. And with that, that does bring me on to the sandwich rule. Again, this is great for if you're struggling to just make an outfit go together, it can be a really great rule to kind of lean on and help when it comes to dressing. I do this all the time. I'm just going to literally put some screen grabs here from recent reels, recent videos where I just do this and all it is is it's matching an item of clothing on the top, be it a top or a jacket or a coat, with an item on the bottom. I usually like that to be my shoes and there's just something about it that it really makes it look like you've put a lot of thought into the outfit. It just creates this really polished and finished look. My boyfriend has even adopted this rule. He's heard me speak about it before and now he does it. He literally will match his white trainers to a white tee with his jacket and he has even said it has helped him on so many days when he doesn't know what to wear. So yeah, as I said, I'll pop examples to the side, but I love doing this. There's nothing I love better actually in the autumn winter than matching like some tan boots, maybe with a tan jumper or a tan coat. I just love that look. As I said, it makes the outfit feel put together and just overall better. Okay, tip number six, and it's probably one of my favorites and something that I will always encourage people to try and that is monochrome outfits. Now, I don't know a single person that doesn't love maybe like an all black outfit, but I'm not just talking about outfits of one colour. I am talking about outfits of one colour, but maybe incorporating different shades of that colour. It's probably one of my favourite ways to dress. If I'm really, really stuck, I will honestly look in my wardrobe, look for things of the same colour, but maybe different shades. I love doing this with shades of brown, beige, grey, blues. There's just something about a monochromatic outfit. It really looks like you've tried hard, but it's so chic and sophisticated that it just help, it helps me so much when it comes to picking outfits. So I have to share that tip. I know it might not be the most groundbreaking of tips, but it really does help me. So yeah, next time you are getting ready, just have a look in your wardrobe and you might pull out things that you wouldn't have even thought of pairing together, but in a monochromatic outfit, it can work. Okay, next tip is to add complementary accessories. Now, I say complementary because accessories can make or break an outfit. Firstly, if you're not wearing any, you're probably not doing the outfit any justice. I feel like every single outfit benefits from accessories. Two, if you are overpowering an outfit with accessories, if you're wearing something really clean and your style is quite minimal and pared back, throwing on a load of big chunky costume jewellery with clashing colours and sunglasses and handbags is going to ruin it. But then again, wearing maybe the wrong accessories, maybe mismatched accessories, again, it's going to ruin it. So that's why I emphasise complementary accessories. 
So something that I like to do personally, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I do quite like to match the color of maybe my belt or my shoes to my bag. And that usually includes the hardware. So if I am wearing a belt with gold hardware, I'd most likely choose a bag with gold hardware as well. Now, I do quite like the look of matching shoes and bags, but is it an essential? No, but I do think they should complement each other to a certain extent. But not wearing any accessories at all, it's like leaving the icing off the cake. I feel like outfits just look unfinished. So if you are someone that looks in the mirror, even if you're just wearing literally a plain black t-shirt and black jeans, do you know how cool that outfit could look with so many different accessories? So if you are someone that looks in the mirror before you leave the house and you feel like something is missing, it's probably accessories. So I'm talking jewellery, sunglasses, handbags, belts. It can all contribute to the outfit and I just think it's such a cool way as well to inject personality into looks. So yes, an outfit might be what you consider simple or boring, but the accessories is where you really inject your personality. So have fun with accessories and yeah, just don't forget about them. Don't neglect them. Don't fall into the rut maybe of just thinking the same accessories will go with every single outfit because it's not always the case. I guarantee once you pay attention to it, you'll really notice the difference that they make. Next tip, and this is something that I've adopted probably over the last year or two, but I feel like it's definitely helped me elevate my style, and that is to avoid rips and distressed hems, especially when it comes to jeans. Now, I know that might be a bit controversial. I know some people love ripped jeans. I used to love ripped jeans, and you know, I still do feel like they can have their moment, but I don't think they should make up the basis of maybe your entire wardrobe. I think if you stick to classic cuts and non-distressed looking jeans, trousers, then I just feel like it gives your whole vibe a much more classic and timeless look. I don't know whether that's just something I have adopted with age, because like I said, I used to love ripped jeans and I would still wear a pair of ripped jeans, but like I said, I just wouldn't base my entire wardrobe and style around them. And I'd say I do tend to avoid them now and I just feel like overall the outfits just look a lot more put together when they're not a part of it. And another tip that I absolutely love to follow is to elevate more casual pieces in your wardrobe with more formal pieces in your wardrobe. It's like a play on juxtaposition where you pair things that perhaps on paper shouldn't go together. Now I love that way of dressing and it definitely can add a bit more of a quirky edge to your outfits. You can really go to the extremes. Like I've seen, you know, people wearing floaty dresses with like grungy leather jackets and you can really have fun with it. One of the ways I really like to do this is by mixing pieces that are more casual, such as my jeans with pieces that are slightly more formal, like my shirts. I love the vibe that that gives and it doesn't just go for jeans. I love pairing things such as like a casual t-shirt with formal trousers. It's just another way to bring uh, items in your wardrobes together, create new outfits and always have something to wear but feel put together as well. And like I said, you can go all out with this and you can have so much fun with it and go a little bit more out there with it. These are just simple ways that I incorporate this kind of tip into my everyday dressing. And then finally, my final tip, and I know I've said this about a couple now, but probably another fave, is to come up with your outfit uniforms. Now, I know that might sound a bit strange, but outfit uniforms save me. On days where I just can't think of an outfit or I don't have time to think of an outfit, I need to throw something on and get out the door. Thinking of my outfit uniforms helps me. So what is an outfit uniform? Exactly what you think it would be. It's just a really simple outfit formula that you can stick to that means you will always have something to wear. So to give you an example of this, I actually recently shared a reel over on my Instagram sharing three of my autumn outfit uniforms. So my go-to outfit formulas, that means, you know, I always have something to wear. So the ones that I used in that reel in particular were oversized jumper, shorts, tights and boots. 
I can really have fun with this uniform. I can change up the jumper, the colour of the shorts, the boots, and you can create different looks, but it's the same uniform. And another example of this for the autumn is a knitted dress and boots. Again, you can give off completely different vibes, but it's the same uniform. And another one is a knit jumper and wide leg trousers. I've popped some examples here just so you can see how different each of the outfits look, but sticking to an outfit uniform. So come up with a uniform of your own. Maybe you've got an outfit that you feel like you really are drawn to wearing. So for me, I feel like when I don't know what to wear, a really good outfit for me is a really simple black pair of leggings, knee high sort of riding style boots, and an oversized chunky jumper. I feel really great in that outfit and I feel like you can mix and match, you know, play around with different jumpers, different boots, and create different vibes. So yeah, try and give yourself your own outfit uniform so that when you are looking in your wardrobe for something to wear, you can think of a uniform and quickly put an outfit together. And there we have it guys, those are my 10 tips to help elevate your everyday style. I really hope you enjoyed this kind of video guys, I hope you did get something from this. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this. I was actually thinking about doing a video based on autumn outfit uniforms, just giving you loads and loads of outfit inspo with all of my different uniforms that I kind of gravitate towards too. Um, so yeah, let me know if you guys would like to see that. Anyway, I am going to leave this video here. So please do remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next one.